Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Hawkinsville, First United Methodist Church. It's so great to see you here tonight for our Christmas Eve service. It's so wonderful to see so many friends and family who are uh, back home here for worship. We're so glad that we had this place where you can come back to and feel welcome on Christmas Eve. Thank you for being here tonight. I also want to welcome our online viewers who are watching. We thank you guys for tuning in and making us a part of your Christmas Eve. Thank you so much for being with us as well. Great to have uh, my parents here. Let's give them a round of applause. Guys, good to see you guys. They came up from uh, St. Simon's. Y'all give me a weather report from what it's like down there. Cold down there, too. It's cold up here. But we thank you so much for being here, guys. I know it's cold outside. Uh, most of y'all were kind of bunched in together to stay warm. I like that. If you need to do that, that's perfectly fine. But uh, God will warm our hearts as we worship him here tonight. This is a... Uh, special night in the life of the church and we are blessed to be here together and once again thank you for being here thank you for making this service a part of your family tradition and thank you for supporting our great church we're going to begin tonight with the liturgy of the lighting of the advent candle so i invite you to join me that's going to be in your bulletin or you can follow along on the screens and you will uh, recite the parts after i begin Tonight, we light the candle of hope. We light the candle of peace. We light the candle of joy. We light the candle of love. Finally, we light the Christ candle. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here in this place tonight. I pray that you will be with us as we celebrate Christmas, as we remember the good news, and as we cherish being with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us anew that we might experience your love this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you, invite you, I invite you <laughs> to take a hymnal if you'd like, and it, you'll find it on page 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, otherwise the, the uh, verses will be on the screen, and we'll stand together, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, all three verses. <laughs>
Thank you. You may be seated. I invite you to join me for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the pastoral prayer, and then we will all join together in one voice for the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray tonight. Lord, we thank you for this great night to come together to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, into our world. It is a night of deep meaning and contemplation as we reflect on your great love for us. We thank you for loving us so much. We thank you for loving the world. We come to you tonight amidst all the busyness of the season. Family is in town. The presents still need to be wrapped. Christmas lunch needs to be prepared for tomorrow. But we come here tonight to pause and slow down. We come to prepare our hearts. We gather around the Christmas story once again because we know this story is what it's all about. Work in our hearts tonight, preparing us for your presence. Work in our lives that we may reach out to others in mercy and compassion. Work in our world that the darkness may be dispelled by the brightness of your love. Father, I say a special Christmas blessing tonight over those who are feeling lost and lonely. I lift up those who are broken and hurting and wounded. I pray for those who have lost loved ones over the past year. We ask for your presence to be with them all. Be near them, comfort them, love them. Grant them your peace and your assurance this night. And I pray that you would guide all of us to the manger tonight. Guide us to Mary and Joseph. Guide us to the Christ child brought into the world. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our King. May his presence fill our hearts this night. May his love transform our very souls so that we might become your people. So that we will continue to follow Jesus and live for him in all things. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. As we pray now together the great prayer he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. A little town of Bethlehem. I've, all my years, 81 years, I don't think we've ever discussed the weather in Bethlehem, the night Jesus was born. But it might have felt a little like this, right here in this church. A little chilly. <laughs> so let's sing about a little town of Bethlehem. Found on page 230. We'll ask you to stand, please. First, second, and third.
Well, I woke up this morning and it was 15 degrees outside, which I don't know if you know this, is a little unusual for Hawkinsville, Georgia, but it was very cold. And get this, I had no power in my house. Did, did anybody wake up with no power? Was I the only one? There's a few others out there who didn't have power. I'm glad to see that you survived. You made it and you're here at church tonight. I'm glad to see you. But it was very cold there for a little while, wasn't it? But we are here tonight and it's wonderful to be here in the presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ. The title of today's sermon is The God Who Remembers. And I invite us to hear these words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with them a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Every family has Christmas traditions. My entire life on Christmas Eve, when my family would gather to exchange presents, we would always start out with the reading of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. And I'll be honest with you, as a kid, I always kind of dreaded this part of the night. This was the thing getting in the way of me beginning to open up all of my Christmas presents. I would say, yeah, 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 Dad, I get it, I know, Jesus, baby, angels, Mary, Joseph, I got it, I'm good to go. But I'll tell you something, that tradition has done something to me over the years. It reminds me of what this is all about. It helps me to keep my priorities right. It serves to to put everything else in perspective. Does your family have Christmas traditions? Maybe it's Christmas shopping at the last second. Anybody do that? Maybe you've got that one meal that just makes it feel like Christmas time. Maybe you love to get together and sing Christmas carols. Or maybe you've got that one movie that you have to watch every year, like Christmas Vacation or Die Hard. You know, the Christmas classic movies. Maybe your tradition is arguing with each other in the car on your way to visit relatives, right? Uh, Maybe you like to uh, get together and you like to talk about that one side of the family that nobody likes to go and visit. We're not the only ones who did that, are we? One year, a writer for the New York Times book section was doing some reviews on new children's Christmas books that had come out that year. And speaking of this one book, she said it wasn't very good. The reviewer had this to say about the real story. She said, in terms of the plain narrative... The nativity story is hard to beat. It has pretty much everything. A journey, a baby, music, angels, animals, refugees, kindness, and big, big special effects. I think she's right about that. This story is really kind of hard to beat. Every 
family has Christmas traditions. Maybe you can add reading the Christmas story to your family tradition each year. But I must warn you, your kids won't like it if you do. Your grandkids won't like it if you do, but it is worth it. Trust me. We hear this famous story once again tonight, but we still have the question in our minds, is it true? I mean, is is this story true? Is there a God? And what is God like? Does God care about me? The story takes place back in the days of Emperor Augustus. And yes, that name should impress you because Augustus was the Roman emperor and the most powerful man in the world at that time. Mary and Joseph get caught up in his decree for a census, having to return to Joseph's family town of Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is an interesting place. There's not much to it. Just a small village, you know, kind of a a blinking yellow light kind of town. But it's where King David was born, the greatest king in Israel's past. And the Old Testament looked forward to a day when a new king would come to be born in Bethlehem as well. So this is where Joseph and Mary are heading. And by the way, Mary is pregnant. Ladies, can you imagine taking a trip by donkey while you were pregnant? It's a miracle that Mary did not kill Joseph about halfway through this journey, right? I mean, then we would have had the latest new season of a a true crime podcast or a new series on Netflix to watch about Mary killing Joseph. But I'm glad that didn't happen. They arrive, they can't find a premium place to stay because everything is booked. All the five-star hotels are packed. Joseph forgot to make reservations, which is really a key part of traveling, right? And so they find themselves off in the back room stable with the animals. And this is where Mary has her baby. I can't imagine a less ideal scenario. Can you? Then the shepherds are out working in the fields when they receive a visit from an angel of the Lord. In this day, shepherds were really looked down upon. They were seen as kind of these rough, unsavory characters. There could have been a song written about these guys. Mama, don't let your sons grow up to be shepherds. But to these folks, representing the the rough and tough outsiders, the angel shows up with this news. News for them, news for all people, news of great joy. I like that phrase the angel says. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Like, hey, shepherds, it's finally happened. It's here. God has come down to see you, come into your world, come to bring life to all. And the shepherds must have thought they had taken some drugs because they're like, what in the world is going on? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. But no, no drugs were involved here. God had showed up, and they were the first recipients of that good news. God was breaking into the world through Mary and Joseph's child. There was a new king in town, God's king, and he was the true Lord of all. You know who probably wouldn't like the sound of that news? The current king of the world, Emperor Augustus. I mean, emperors don't really like to be challenged, do they? They don't like their authority to be questioned. But suddenly, out in the middle of this field, this news rings out that the emperor is not the real lord of the world. Caesar Augustus is not the savior of the world. Jesus is the true Lord of all. Jesus is the Savior. And did you know that's the news we hear tonight in Hawkinsville, Georgia as well? This story is also the answer to the question that we all have of, is there a God? If so, what's he like? Does he care about me? What the story says is that, yes, there is a God. And what's God like? God comes down to us. God invades our world, our story, our time to do what? To scold us, to yell at us, to shake his finger at us and tell us how bad we are? No. God comes to bring us back to life. God comes down to bring us salvation. God comes to put the world back together again through Jesus Once upon a time, there were two angels gathered together. The senior angel was showing the younger angel around all the wonders of the universe. And they viewed all of these whirling galaxies and blazing suns and then darted across the infinite distances of space 
until at last they entered this one galaxy of all these billions of stars. And as the two of them drew near the star which we call our sun and to its circling planets, the senior angel pointed to a small and rather insignificant sphere turning very slowly on its axis. It looked dull. It looked dirty like a a tennis ball out there in space to this little angel whose mind was filled with all of the, the whirling galaxies that he had just seen. And the senior angel pointed his finger. He said, I want you to look at that one in particular. Well, it looks rather small to me, the younger one said. It looks rather dirty to me. What's so special about that one? And he listened in stunned belief as the senior angel told him that this planet, this insignificant, not very clean planet, was the renowned visited planet. The younger angel said, do you mean to tell me that our great and glorious king went down in person to this fifth-rate little ball? Why would he do a thing like that? Do you mean to tell me that he stooped so low as to become one of these creeping, crawling creatures of that floating ball? The senior angel said, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I don't think he would like you calling them creeping, crawling creatures in that tone of voice. For as strange as it may seem to us, he loves them. He went down to visit them so that he might lift them up to become like him. Little angel couldn't even process what he was hearing. And maybe that's like us tonight. We hear this story, but we can't even process this news. We can't even really begin to comprehend it. But as a preacher of the gospel, I tell you the story tonight. I remind you of the good news. And I'm even bold enough to proclaim to you tonight that this story is true. But know this tonight, I would be a poor preacher if I just left it there. I even dare to ask you this tonight. Do you believe it? Is this the story that your life revolves around? I even dare to ask you, are you a Christian? Have you given your life to this baby? Have you been made new through the blood of Christ? It's what he came for. It's what he came to do. Maybe we can hear the story anew tonight. Maybe we can suspend whatever doubts and questions we may have and just open ourselves up to God's great love. I love the shepherds' response after they encounter the family. The shepherds returned home glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. I can't help but see them jumping for joy at experiencing Jesus. I mean, this is truly news worth jumping up and down for, isn't it? Like feet off the ground, clicking your heels, jumping for joy. Like Ebenezer Scrooge waking up on Christmas morning and realizes that he has another chance at life. Can you remember any presents that you got as a kid that made you jump for joy? I bet there will be some kids jumping for joy tomorrow morning at houses all across our community. I remember mine one year, uh, I was much younger, I asked Santa for one of those three-in-one game tables. It was ping pong, air hockey, and a pool table all in one for me to play right in my room. And y'all, I was so excited about this thing, I could not have been more excited. This was my number one through 100 on my Christmas wish list. And I remember rushing into the den on Christmas morning, and guess what? I didn't see it. I saw a lot of other great stuff, some toys, some action figures, a lot of candy. Ah, who wants that? But I didn't see the game table. And I'm not going to lie, I was bummed out. I had a disappointed look on my face when my mom and dad said, Jack, hey, what is that over there? You see, in my excitement, I had run right past it in the room. I had run right past it, and I turned and looked, and there it was, the three-in-one game table. And you want to talk about jumping for joy. I remember getting up on the couch and jumping up and down, you know, the, the parsonage couch that you're not supposed to jump on. That's what I was on. I was saying, I got it, I got it. Santa didn't forget. And to the parsonage committee now, I don't jump on the couch anymore, um, except when Georgia plays Alabama in the national championship. That's the only time that happens. 
I got it. Santa didn't forget. In the biblical story that you heard tonight, we hear the good news. God didn't forget. God doesn't forget about us. God doesn't abandon us. God doesn't leave us in the midst of our sin, our pain, our grief. God loves us. God cares. God remembers. I don't know where you may be in your life tonight. I don't know what you may be dealing with, but know that you're not alone. Know that you don't have to do it by yourself. God loves us. God cares. God remembers. You know, I thought about this the other day. I don't think anybody's throwing a Caesar Augustus party tonight. Did you know that? People all around the world are not gathered in rooms praising the emperor. No one's exchanging gifts in Caesar's name tomorrow morning. But Jesus, on the other hand, here we are, just ordinary people, everyday folks, sitting around minding our own business tonight when we receive the greatest news of all. Hawkinsville, Georgia, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. What a miracle. The God who remembers. The God who remembers us. Merry Christmas. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Next, we're going to move into our service of Holy Communion. And I invite you, if you want to follow along in the liturgy, we'll be on page 12 in our hymnal, or you can also follow along on the screens. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, free us for joyful obedience, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And join me for the prayer of the great thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite my helpers to come forward at this time. As they do, uh, we're going to have two stations of communion. We'll have one on each side. We want you to come down the outside aisle. And you can receive communion and spend some time at the altar in prayer if you want to do that. And then you can return to your seat back in the middle aisle. But as you come forward tonight, know that this is not my table. It's not the Hawkinsville First Methodist table. This is God's table. And God invites you. You don't have to be a member of our church. You don't have to have gone here for a certain number of years. This is God's place. And you are welcome to receive his love, to receive his grace, and to receive his mercy at the table tonight. Come, let's celebrate communion.
blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Praise the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby
Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, didn't know who you were, didn't know you come to save us, Lord. To take our sins away, our eyes were blind, we couldn't see, we didn't know who you were. Long time ago, you Jesus boy, the world treats you mean, Lord, treats me mean too, but that's how things are down here, we don't know who you told us how we are trying. Master, you have shown us how even when you were dying. Just seems like we can't do right. Look how we've treated you, but please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know twas you, sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago. Sweet little holy child, and we didn't know who you were. Thank you.
so much for being here tonight. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas as you remember what it's all about. It's all about Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Come down into the world to show us God's love, to save us, and to lead us to life. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.